Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to yet another episode of Disruption Talks, where we invite top experts to discuss digital acceleration, winning strategies, innovation, and scaling products. In this episode, uh, we have the pleasure of hosting AL2, uh, product design lead, design manager of Karma Consumer Cards. We have the opportunity to dive into the scenarios of Klarna, one of the top fintech companies out there. Hi, Egan. How are you? Are you there with us? Yes. Hello. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Hi. Nice to meet you. How are you? Nice to meet you as well. Uh, very good. Uh, I'm currently in Berlin, and it's uh, it was a bit cloudy, but it's very good. Cool. So I get, um, let's start uh, about a uh, uh, short personal story about you. Past experience, current role at Klarna, scope responsibilities. What are you doing there? Uh, definitely. Uh, I'm in Klarna at the moment. As I said, I'm based in Berlin, um, but I'm not uh, originally from here. So I'm originally from, uh, from Turkey. I grew up there and I studied the, the, until the university and then I moved to in different countries. So I, I worked in, in Florence, in Italy, then I worked in, uh, in Barcelona, in Spain, and then I moved to, to Stockholm, uh, in Sweden. And, and then I moved to, to Stockholm, Sweden for Klarna, actually, and three and a half years ago. And then from the Stockholm, I relocated uh, to a different office in Berlin and currently I'm based in Berlin at the moment. Oh. And in, in Klarna, I do, um, I'm a um, product design lead and the manager. I, I say the both because it's, um, uh, we have a separate uh, title. So we, uh, the title is separate than what you, uh, what you do. So being a IC or, or, or manager can be mm -hmm. uh, independently be, you can become uh, without be, becoming a lead. Cool. Interesting. So quite a diverse uh, background, uh, many experience around the Europe. So, what's um, the focus of your current team? Uh, what challenges are you facing currently? What are your most important KPI, for example? Yeah, uh, I'm working with the um, with the consumer facing cards in Klarna, mm -hmm. and as um, uh, as you might know, if you don't know, the Klarna is um, is actually uh, started as a as a payment um, provider uh, yeah. in the uh, originally from the from Sweden. And started, I think, in the 16 years ago, and and currently, Klan is in more than 17 countries, and they have uh, more than 90 million uh, consumers uh, active, like month monthly active users, and and then they have more than 250,000 merchants integrated. Wow, uh, that's a lot. And and we are quite a lot of people as well. So we are more than 4,000 people uh, working in Klan. Uh, how many designers? And um, so we have a different type of design. In general, the, the design, what we call the competence, the design team is, uh, we passed the 100 uh, currently. Cool. And uh, how many people in you manage directly or lead directly? So um, for this, I need to may maybe explain uh, a bit about the structure in the yeah. so We have, a, uh, I would say, a quite unique and quite, uh, uh, quite good structure. And so it's in the similar to, uh, all the other the tech companies, they, we have something similar structure. It's like um, you might know as like uh, like squads and uh, and tribes. Uh, we we have what we call the domains and the teams, and and this is something more tailored to the mm -hmm. more to the close to the motivation of the, the business in in Klarna, and and that is um, the domains are the um, the the big units that contains the teams, and teams is the ultimate uh, units that's. Um, get the job done in the in Klarna, and we have uh, a bit more than 20, 25 uh, domains at the moment. Mm -hmm. And each domain have um, in average like 10, 15 teams. Uh, could be more, could be could be less. And and we have designers, uh, especially product designers. They are located in into the teams, so we don't have a centralized teams. We have a quite mm -hmm. decentralized. It's more distributed in the in, in between different teams. And, and I'm working in a domain is what, uh, what is the team is called the support team on the domain. So we are supporting the whole domain and the teams inside of our domain and which our domain name is the consumer card, which means we are mm -hmm. focusing on the consumer facing card products. And, and in Klarna, as, um, 
it's kind of in the the hybrid in the between the the banking world and the shopping so it's the the unique company that can combine these two uh, big industries and that is the the very uniqueness of the of the Klarna. but also we are providing uh, the payment services the payment uh, the the methods to our uh, merchants as well so merchants can integrate the payment methods same as like in the how you pay the paypal in the in the checkout and and also uh, we have the consumer products and so if you don't have um, any uh, client payment methods in your favorite uh, brand or or website that is the the problem we are solving so uh, mm -hmm. you can pay with Klarna anywhere you want uh, with the special Klarna payment methods through the consumer cards and our most popular uh, product is the Klarna card so you can pay with Klarna card anywhere you want interesting thank you very much um i was uh, uh sneaking to your profile social profiles and i landed in your personal website and you claim that uh, you are a lover of symbols grids and uh, you like to simplify complexities so you believe it's really important to simplify so how does it translate uh, this to your work at clara isn't that what we do normally we simplify the things uh, to make yeah. it easy to understand and if uh, so whatever we do whatever solution we solve if we cannot uh, if it's not understandable and it means we are not successful and mm -hmm. if we cannot simplify the things the complexities it cannot be understandable so it's in in quite um, in, a, in a simple explanation uh, to make it understandable and uh, and to make it more effective uh, of course we need to simplify almost anything we do actually not only the design i agree um so what, what's the mission of uh Klarna design team the north star uh what are your values principles we are we quite uh, yeah we are quite attached to the the Klarna, the the business uh the motivation as well so we are in a in a unique uh structure so Klarna design team also um is we had designers uh, many years back then but it it was not that big and so it's mm -hmm. recently got bigger uh, especially after like five years ago where the Klarna strategy the the, the vision change into be, before it was a more merchant focus and then become more consumer and um, consumer focused uh, the strategy and that strategy that brings the the design need and also the awareness of the design uh, as you know in the especially in the in the competitive environment on the consumer products that uh, the designers are in uh, playing the critical role in the in the middle of the the products and also the in the middle with, the, with uh, our customers as well and then we rapidly started uh, started to hire many designers and so the the design team grow uh, from three to four designers to today 100 designers in a very short time and and as as the as the mission and then what we do also grow and then changing as as we change uh, while we are growing and in the end uh, what we can say about the culture the design culture is changing with the new people which they are bringing new uh, new things to the culture and it's it's just evolving uh, each year and it's uh, in the end we are quite uh, connected to, to Klarna so we solve the problem on the uh, on our customers to 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 on the banking industry and then the shopping industry and combining into how um, how we can actually uh, solve the new um, the, the way of how we use the money in the end it seems that there is a, <clears throat> a trend in the especially in the fintech industry everybody wants designers out there what's what's happening in your opinion why is that why uh, it looks like that since a couple of years even banks or uh, more traditional uh, financial institution needs so many designers. Yeah, that is an interesting topic as well, because like uh, I think we are living in the, the golden age of the any design discipline exists mm -hmm. uh, so far. And so design is like it's as a as a as a as a craft, as a craftsmanship, as a work is exists uh, more than 100 years. Yeah. And but like uh, it never been so much uh, disruptive or effective on the decision making process of the companies and this is the um, this is the golden age and the future uh, we don't know maybe it will be even more effective it maybe it will evolve something else or maybe it will be less effective than today but uh, we can definitely say that in the moment the this time that we are living actually the golden 
age of the our discipline, uh, specifically about the digital product design, none of the other disciplines uh, reach the points that we we reach today, and and that is a very uh, actually lucky uh, in the moment in the timeline that we we live on uh, at the moment, and even if you compare the digital product design with the um, with the other disciplines, even though digital product design is quite new and quite new discipline, the the feedback we get uh, in one week uh, can be maybe achievable only with the with the traditional graphic design in one year of mm -hmm. time. So that's environment just like uh, make things up uh, like just like learning curve in uh, in incredibly faster. So it's the 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 discipline itself is changing and evolving and improving itself it's in, in in a super high speed together with the technology looking at Klarna website and communication uh, you can feel also as a designer that is very design oriented um, institution i don't know i have this uh, vibe that a lot of designers heads are there i would so say it's well, not what's only, the yeah yeah it's not only the design and mm -hmm. It's it's also for the the brand itself. So the people in Klarna, it's uh, we are very lucky to actually work with many many people are incredibly aware of the design, incredibly mm -hmm. aware of the of the creative uh, the, anything the creativeness in 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 mind. So it's it's just like a very lucky actually in the people why uh, people in the in Klarna that we are working uh, and quite open-minded people especially when, when it comes to the taste uh, when it comes yeah. to the brand when it comes to the to design and and in in because of this environment in normally maybe in the companies we designers actually spend maybe half of our times to actually explain why design is important and the other half maybe, uh, to to actually get the work done but in Klarna we can spend uh, most of the time 100 percentage to get the work done and to not spend actually time on why design is so important because everybody is quite aware on why design is important. So that uh, gives us more flexibility and speed in the end. Cool. So um, the mission of your team seems very ambitious. Um, you say, uh, I read that you are not trying just to rise the bar, but you want to become a bar. So a reference point for, for the world, for the design community. Um, how this this pressure, this uh, high ambitious missions, mission uh, translates in a, into your day to day job? Yeah, it it also touched to the the industry that we we are uh, working today because um, the in industry is is coming uh, from so behind. So especially in the banking industry, I'm I'm talking. It's uh, the traditional banks, and they are so clumsy, so slow, and so um, so like a over documenting and over processing and everything that just like gives us the um, the easiness like even like if you if you simplify the certain things we can be uh, quite disruptive in the industry mm -hmm. and being a disruptive means uh, and also like the the thing we are working on is money right money is very important for many people and 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 that's why uh, it's 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 automatically gives the importance on the in our life in everybody in in all of our customers life and that's why we can actually um, like it's in the in the sustainable in the business sustainable way we can grow very fast, and with the related to that with the awareness and the design and coming with the strategy of the of the the Klarna itself uh, that we are actually hiring the the best designers we can find in all around the world, not only in the in the one location, and that uh, that industry and that awareness in Klarna automatically brings up in the the responsibility on on hiring the best designers and also executing the best uh, the best ever, the the design work we can do in in, in Klarna. Yeah, you said something uh, uh, that's true. Money is really important, but money is also very uh, personal uh, topic. Uh, how yeah. does uh, the design team uh, um, uh, design for different needs and uh, is sure to, to reach uh, uh, the needs of, of uh, so many different users that have a completely different perception and um, way to spend their money? or to control their money exactly and that is also very challenging on understanding our customs as well and every country also has very different habits very different traditions and yeah. very different backgrounds on how they deal with the money and but in the end all the humans are quite 
uh, similar on how we solve in you know, how we tackle in in our daily life and and yeah some some countries may be more advanced on on the digitalization on the certain things some might be more uh, less but like uh, in the end uh, in we kind of like i can see the global um like um global way of solving a certain things that people um actually actually use the money in a similar way that's obvious that we all have a similar setup uh, with the money and and because it touches everything because how we it's our survival and all of our most of our, our lives depends on the on the money on the on the continue so it's a very interesting topic and people are very protective as well and that is another challenge that's what we do in the, in especially like in the testing environments even like a very simple usability tests testings mm -hmm. is it's quite challenging because we cannot test with the placeholder uh we cannot test easily on the placeholder um like text uh we cannot just randomly write the, the amounts most of the people who don't even aware don't even know what is that amount is that's why they don't understand uh, it's quite they want to see their own data because even their money is kind of uh, it's very personalized for them even their numbers is very personalized for them if you show the different numbers they might see a completely different uh, the concept so even the the testings are very challenging actually yeah, they can give a lot of false result if you don't use uh, real parameters, I can imagine. Um, <clears throat> as a team, uh, as a company, you aim to uh, have the, the world's smoothest shopping experience. Yep. And uh, actually, this is your strongest selling point, right? Uh, but from the other hand, uh, you are growing really fast. You just uh, told us that your design team, for example, scaled up in the last year uh, 10 times. Um, this means that there are a lot of challenges, uh, new features, new flows, new operation, new way to work together. Um, how, to, how do you manage to maintain a high level of quality in this uh, fast changing environment? It is very challenging, I would say. It's, it's, it's one of the, the most important uh, the topics that we are tackling actually in this, in this time of the year and the quality is very important and obviously speed is great we have the speed we can definitely say uh, i can personally also say that i am working in a company the the fastest company i ever worked before and it's also quite true for many many people in clan as well and speed is great speed is good but also speed is bad as well so uh, in the same time we are compromising from the quality and the quality is uh, is very uh, important topic at the moment that we are tackling and we are growing very high, but also uh, in the same time, we are trying to keep the quality in the, in the very high standards. And, and that, is, um, that is not easy, but like uh, we are experimenting at, and trying in new ways and, and trying to best practices in the industry and in the, in the design world as well, and to keep uh, up to the, to the bar in the high. Sounds really challenging. And it reminds also to me some challenges that we have in our team and at Google. Um, what are the best practices uh, uh, that you use to maintain consistency uh, across the world, world portfolio of all Klarna products? So the design system uh, having the same bar of quality. Yeah, and so we we have um, we have four different um, groups that in in design in Klarna we, that we are focusing on heavily so one of them is design system which is critical for for all of us is in the end it's a, it's a it's a product inside of the Klarna that is actually many employees are using many designers and uh, product managers engineers uh, even in the marketing uh, managers they are using the design system and also we have another area like the merchants we are handling the merchant side the merchant portal the the, the merchant experience as the best and and also we have the payments the the more into in deep dive into payments which is different in every country and quite um, uh, quite complicated with especially with many regulations and in the end we have the consumer area uh, where we focus on direct to consumer products uh, or more consumer facing products like uh, like app for example we have and and this is the the way the the way of, of the the working in Klana the organizational structure actually allow us to focus on the problem uh, spaces uh, and allow us to to own to be responsible on these uh, problem areas on problem spaces in a much better so it's it's the, the organization structure actually 
allow us to work, uh, allow the, the teams to work in autonomously and more independently, and which means they can work and they can deliver stuff very fast. And also they are responsible on the quality as well. And this is our, our, our job also in design that we are uh, another thing that we are focusing in a lot in the same time in the growth, same time delivering, but also in the quality as well, the quality uh, assurance that we are checking. And in this is is uh, the reason also why we have a decentralized design team, why we have the product designers and researchers and, and the UX writers in dedicated to the problem spaces, that the problem areas that we are assigning in a certain teams, and they are not actually sitting together, they are sitting together with the engineers and the product managers and all the responsible people who are delivering the, the, the certain problem uh, solutions. And, and the reason uh, is that they are also responsible on the, the quality and we are making sure that uh, everything is in high quality as well. Um, it seems from what you said that uh, uh, the design team at Klarna has a strong influence uh, on the roadmap of the product itself. You are kind of a, a big influencer in the strategy. Um, but um, how your team of designers um, get full acknowledgement about uh, limitation? For example, you mentioned regulations. That is a very hard topic uh, from a design point of view. A lot of limitations, and but also technical limitations and uh, constraints. Yeah, and uh, I mean in the product design. Um, so I will touch on the team as well. Uh, but in the product design, we can just simplify into three steps, right? Learning the the complexity, the learning the, the what we are actually tackling, and it means learning the um, the regulation, uh, the learning the the country, uh, the specific needs like culture, like the people. And, and then reducing, which is simplifying the, the complexity. And in the end, the craft, we are just crafting it as, as best as possible. And, and that allows us to just like uh, the, in the beginning to learn everything. And we have uh, many dedicated lawyers in the, in the problem areas in Klarna that help us to understand what is happening in different countries and what is upcoming in the, in the different com uh, countries. And which we have to learn, we have to know the regulation, we have to know the, the business, we have to know the monetization, and then we can solve that um, certain problems accordingly. And and in the in the teams specific uh, that we don't in Klana we don't have a product owner, so the teams are the owning the whole product, and the teams are uh, the smallest unit in Klana, and they are the responsible on on the, what they are. Uh, working on in the problem area, the problem space. So we don't assign the features or ownership directly to them. We assign the problem space and we don't give them on what they need to work. We just like allow them to focus on the problem space. And then in problem space, they find the solutions. They find the how to like what they want to deliver and what is the end result and, and how they can uh, deliver that. It means they are controlling their own process as well. So they are quite independent and autonomously uh, working in, in a problem uh, area, in a problem space by them, uh, by their own. I'm reading some comments that we are receiving while we are live. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Valid Akdas is one of your colleagues, maybe. Uh, because it seems knowing what we are doing, it is asking how can we offer more smoother experience when we want uh, our user to buy via financing, for example, Klarna buy now, pay later, uh, split, split it, etc. So, how, how can we offer smoother experience when we want yeah. our, to buy financing? And and that is that is I would say um, it's an uh, interesting uh, topic. Like is in the, so right now the industry is called buy now pay later, right? But what is buy now pay later uh, in the end? Uh, so you borrow money. So we have a like there is a money, and so the money could be in your pocket, which means you could be on your money uh, pool, and which could be the bank of your own bank. And, and you might not have a money. And, and then also you might have a money, but you just want to try out or you just want to pay later in time. And then you borrow money from Klarna, right? That is the, what is happening. And we have a lot of like industry jargons. We, have, we are calling it credit. We are calling, calling it financing. We are calling in many different like banking uh, terms that we don't understand usually. 
Uh, but in the end, the, the the things we are doing is just borrowing money from a source, another source, and that source is the Klana. And and then what we want to achieve actually, what is the most the, the, the smoothest experience we can provide is clarity, the transparency, that it, it should be super clear on what you are borrowing and and how can you pay back and it's also it should be super transparent which is none of the banks are transparent that um, they are earning so much money that uh, so much the hidden fees so much hidden interest they don't even notify even if they notify they they are trying to hide as much as possible we do the opposite in climate and we are making sure that the, the transparency that this is the money you are paying back and this is how you pay back and and this is what we what we use on on, on borrowing money experience in overall in Klarna. I hope it's uh, it answers. Yeah, so it makes sense. So you name transparency and uh, doing the right choice and not having hidden fees. This brings really to a ethical point of view, ethical design uh, uh, matter. So how important is uh, being ethical for Klarna? And uh, how is important in your opinion in this industry nowadays? To have an ethical design and product, it is it is very important. So there are two different ethical principles, right? The one is the in the the human ethical principles that we follow in design, obviously like uh, like transparency and like what we like uh, whatever they do in experience, we shouldn't intentionally hide uh, in the information or we shouldn't try to manipulate. I mean, everything we do, we manipulate. It's but we are trying to manipulate in a in a good way. We are trying to manipulate as much clear as possible in in the end design is manipulative and that's why it's very tricky and that's why it is very um like uh, open for other kind of like um the people to affect the design in a in a quite bad way like hiding it in a non-ethical way and in the in design that we f we are following of course the main main principles but this is also inside of the our, our ourselves that in the in as a human that we need to be we need to think we need to empathize to other 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 people and in the financial ethical way, that is something else, and that is something is changing very fast. In this, uh, in obviously that uh, because of this, uh, the thing what we are working is because it's it's about the money, and because money is is super important in people's life, and every country has a uh, so much rule on to not abuse the usage of this money, and that's why the system is is very like a complex that's why system has a lot of comp uh, a lot of regulations and uh, the banking has like uh, banks like have a lot of processes and security it's for it's for it's for people's good it's for actually like um, for consumers to actually help them but in the end the system is so uh, so clumsy so over uh, just like over complexity and then in the end it's just it's the, it's not really the benefits the consumer in the, in the and the experience and that is something we are trying to solve that and and obviously with the new neo banks and the new new uh, digital the digitalization of the the industry that the new type of banks are are burning and the new type of shopping experience is burning and that is uh, uh, changing the industry itself and right now we are in the middle of this change process and i don't know how this process will end up in the in the which direction but definitely we are in the in the beginning of the uh, actually uh, very long uh, change process of a uh, more financial awareness uh, with the, as, a, as a human being i would say and actually this brings to another question that uh, rafael from Metguro uh, is asking um how can product design educate people how can we the people behind products make sure that our app design actually educates society on payments, for example, financial matter and their consequence. Uh, for, extensing, for, for instance, uh, educating the NPL users on how it actually works. Well, um, education is a tough, tough one. It's, it's, a, it's another topic, like how can we educate? Because education starts in a very young age, right? And, and so edu educating means it's more about, uh, I would say, the creating the financial awareness, right, in that concept, uh, context. And creating the financial awareness, of course, is one of the, um, the results that we are aiming to achieve. Uh, but our main purpose also to make it make things uh, clear, understandable, usable, and, and also emotional as much as possible uh, for our customers. And in, in the end, all of these elements actually leads to the, the financial awareness. 
So we 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 obviously we want to, that our customers to have a financial awareness, but uh, this is not one of the goals. This is one of the consequences that uh, when we actually just make things simple, and and accessible, and in the end uh, people know more and more. And the reason why people don't have a financial awareness, uh, why they don't have an education, is because of the the complexity of the the old companies and the and the regulations that it, which means the country rules. And and what we are trying to do not to change this, and we are just trying to make it as clear as possible, to simplify as uh, as much as possible, and as transparent. And in the end, is um, as a result, we are giving the awareness of the of the financial. Thank you. Really interesting, actually. Um, let's change a bit um, the angle. Um, let's be a bit more generic. Talk about the industry. Uh, what what are the most exciting uh, design challenges ahead uh, of this industry, in your opinion? What do you foresee in the near future or the far future? For industry specific, right? The design challenges. Yes, specific. design challenges for fintech and shopping experience. And I would say that uh, many people are actually thinking like, uh, how can we simplify or how can we solve the problems that people's in mind? But like uh, the industry changes so fast and the people are learning very fast that sometimes we forget that uh, also like the size of the corner. We are in the end, we have uh, 90 million monthly active users. And in, with the size of the corner, that actually we can change how, uh, how, how people sh uh, shop or how people use money in a way and we can affect that by just like creating a certain behaviors or sort certain solutions that we are trying. So it it's it means that we can manipulate. We have so much um, like groups. We have so much bigger audience that we can manipulate through the other other people and people in, in just in the in a circle. So that is a big responsibility. But same time, that is the one of the reasons why we really consider the, the ethical concerns in, in the beginning. And, and that is the, the big challenge in the same time. And that challenge is actually not only the simplifying, not only the, the solving the design problems. Also, we are thinking that uh, that, is an, that is a very important topic for our, our customers. That is not something like, um, like uh, allowing them to just uh, watch uh, in a TV shows or just not, just not uh, something that uh, they do like once a month. That is, they, they are interacting with that, uh, that medium, which is the, the money in every day, in almost every hour. And that's why it it's gives us the more uh, bigger responsibility and then the solving and the learning all of the challenges like regulations and like the changes and like the, the trends and what is happening in the, in the, with the money in the, in the, in the world and also about the, the future as well. Thank you. Uh, during the past two years, of course, uh, every one of us um, has been affected by drastic changes in uh, many aspects of our life. Uh, pandemic brought uh, some revolutions, some acceleration, digitalization, but uh, e-commerce was already there, but uh, he had a big boost. Um, in your opinion, what are the most evident or hidden changes that the shopping experience uh, uh, had? Yeah, maybe during... I, can, I can give some insight knowledge uh, about that. Yes. So I was uh, I was monitoring um, very closely on when the pandemic uh, started, and yes, the in the in the in the beginning, it's everything stopped, uh, nearly stopped, and the shopping really decreased. And suddenly, like uh, including me, that um, I think, like uh, I kind of like believing that we have a quite collective mind. Even though if we don't follow the social media or if we don't follow our our friends, and collectively all around the world, we started to shop almost in the same time, almost in the same day, even. And that is not something nobody said like you can shop now. Nobody said like uh, everything is better now. It's just collectively in mind we started to. Uh, look into we started to trust uh, the the cargo companies and the, the logistics just like uh, we can shop uh, easier easier and in 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 a certain way like in a week that everything started like uh, never before like we reached uh, the numbers that we only seen during the black friday mm -hmm. and and the category of the shopping was very interesting in the in the beginning uh, most of the people actually shopped um, garden uh, garden equipments uh, or the the home equipments only and that was uh, that was really funny and we seen like a um, sharp decrease on like jewelry and 
also like we've seen like an incredibly increase on um, on everything what you do in your home actually and obviously that was that is not really shocking uh, the data I think people also like thinking in the same thing that they cannot really do anything what they in the luxury or they cannot do anything in they can do in outside so that's why they focus on a lot in in their own space around uh, surroundings uh, but in the end that is a that was a um, in the positive sides, they started to uh, like they they more like it's encouraged the people to more using on the online services and uh, and the online shopping, and more than uh, more than before that we've seen, and that's in the end uh, like after the, like uh, the 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 intense period of the pandemic finished, people started to shop even even more uh, oftenly uh, during the uh, during uh, during the uh, from the internet directly. So the online shopping increased as a result a lot. Are those changes there to stay in your opinion? It's a reversible yeah, yeah. process. I think so. I mean, uh, some of the, the behaviors, of course, we will go back to normal as, as normal as possible, but um, the things changes and, and actually it's not because, I mean, we don't expect the people to go back in the, the, the exactly as before that they were doing because it's just like more convenient so they just discovered something more convenient, more easier than before. And the, the pandemic just increased the speed of uh, that, that knowledge. And they, they knew somehow, but they never maybe dare to, to use. Maybe they never dare to use even like online banking before. They never uh, like uh, dare to use a certain type of uh, equipment. Uh, buying from uh, online, maybe they were always going to the physical store for these equipments, but because of this, convenience like awareness of the convenience people started to use more on uh, on use on more on the internet and online and it's unlikely to be honest to um, that we we can expect that people to go back thank you um always regarding the pandemic uh, during our past events uh, shelly armstrong head of design at finastra uh, said that uh, the shared experience of working from home and not being to have a social life uh, um, and the blending of personal and professional lives has made design teams even more empathetic. Uh, did you observe similar things happening uh, uh, with financial shopping uh, products um, yeah. or in, within your team? Yeah, in the design perspective, we are trying hard to not this happen. So we have many rituals, uh, we have many uh, online hangouts and we are trying to uh, actually hang out as much as possible to socialize as, as much as possible virtually. And of course, this is challenging. It's not the same as in the same working in the same office, but um, in the advantage is that, that we already have we already have a decentralized uh, that uh, the design structure yeah. and the, the, the disadvantage is normally this product designers are located into teams. So they are, it, it's very important for them to, to sit together with the engineers and the product managers into the same area. And, and the advantage they can solve some problems by just talking each other. And the same problem can delay the certain things in like maybe days in, in virtual life. So that kind of like a quick interactions, that kind of like a quick talkings, uh, I would say it's, it's a, it will be missing, but in the end, some people really like working uh, remotely directly, and some some people they they really miss working in the offices. And I, I'm I'm more in favor of, on the on the missing part that I I, I really like the, the social interactions. I really like the people around me, so uh, I really miss in the the old days that where we are, were in the offices. Yeah, especially when you have to meet uh, users, go outside the building and talk with merch Merchants or possible buyers and understand their need face to face because it's never the same when you send a survey or have a, a video call, or Zoom interview, right? Exactly. That is, a, that is uh, another change. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I feel you. Um, another question coming from the audience uh, Marlena Kinster this time. Um, what kind of research do you do before entering a market? Uh, what would you say are the biggest factors influencing how a person sees or is willing to use BNPL? Include their income level or something completely different? Yeah, um, obviously we 
we try to learn as much as possible from the the market from the from the people uh, in there in the end we are solving problems we are trying to uh, we are cry we are, we are creating utility for for the people in in these countries and then we are trying to understand these people as much as possible and and that we have a we have a, a dedicated the market researchers and we have the user researchers that we are the um, we are using many different methodologies to able to understand the markets if you don't know anything about that market and some markets could be challenging like us and state by state they have a different laws and they have different behaviors on different states and and also it's quite big but uh, some smaller countries might be more easier and but like uh, we are we, we use uh, several methodologies but we are trying to to best uh, and which means that we are trying to uh, to guess the best in the end all of these research all of these testings will just increase the the percentage of the um, the success right is we cannot we, we can never sure about the 100 percentage that will work we can only increase the the possibility of that that percentage and we are trying to increase that that percentage as much as possible in a different uh, different ways and if you already have that market if you have the data it's mo even more easier with the data that we can check in the various type of the data to able to increase that percentage but the, the in the understanding the market uh, also means un understanding the people lives in there is quite important and also the, the who will use and how they're going to use it and specifically on buy now pay later it's, it's a quite new market and quite the uh, i will say it's quite trend at the moment we don't know if if, if, if it's going to still exist in the future that is um that is that is something we don't know it's a, it's a current disruption and it might evolve into something else maybe and that is something we are observing very closely and and reacting very fast as well and any changes in the in the in the industry and but in the to understand the the people to understand the market obviously we follow the, the certain certain ways to able to uh, get to know Cool, thank you. Another question from uh, Bartosz Białek from Metguru. Um, what, are, what are the key design KPI you at Klarna track at various stage of product life cycle? Can you do some example? That is the that is the same uh, thing that I uh, uh, the, that I, uh, I was trying to explain about organization structure is mm -hmm. our teams are very independent. They are very autonomous. So we want the results from them. The, and what are the results? Mm -hmm. Are uh, could be KPI, could be could be OKRs, could be um, on the effects on the market, could be just like a, could be even just emotional results, and, or could be a sustainable results. Mm -hmm. And this is up to the team, up to the problem uh, space that they are working on. And our team, our teams are quite independent, so we don't have a design KPI. We have a team KPIs, and these teams are that focusing on on these. Uh, problem areas the problem spaces and then they, they define their own kpis and that is something so we just give them the problem space and then how to solve that problem space and how to understand uh, this problem is solved to understand what is this uh, this area is about also is up to the teams and that's why it's it's we have a different kpis in every different team and every different problem that we tackle cool uh Let's talk a bit more uh, about uh, other challenges that are out there in, in the in the fintech and shopping industry as well. Um, do you spot some area of improvements uh, where this industry might uh, be still failing or deliver cater some customers' needs? Which industry specifically? Uh, shopping and fintech experience. What Klarna is doing, basically, payment methods for for merchants. And I can clearly say that um, Klarna is innovating and disrupting the uh, the industry in a very unusual, maybe unexpected way. And 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 I I would I wouldn't say any failing part of the industry. It's obviously. Uh, we are making things more eligible, but we are very careful on actually to not. So Klan is not even interested on actually uh, let the people to borrow large amount of money. So that is not something we want to be like uh, in depth into Klana for a very long mm -hmm. time. And Klana is, is not only about the borrowing money. So we really encourage our customers to uh, to use their own money in their bank account if they can. So we don't really encourage them to use uh, to borrow money from Klana if they are shopping on groceries 
However, if they are uh, if they want to, to buy uh, any large purchases or like furniture or something else, uh, of course, they, if they want, they can borrow money in a in a in a more sustainable, in more easy and more transparent way. And that is something we really encourage that we don't really want them to fo like focus on on just like a, in the debt environment. And and that is the the challenging like the other other industry and the companies and the old traditional banks are usually mm -hmm. uh, manipulating this a lot. And because sometimes they're on the option that people can borrow money, sometimes because um, that is even uh, on the way of paying a certain things, they just like, uh, they just, uh, it's just like sometimes even like monopoly, they are just trying to manipulate and earn so much uh, money that ever possible from any uh, any of their customers and sometimes we pay like uh, in a year more than 500 euro for example to the banks we don't we are not even aware on paying this amount of money and and however when we are uh, paying the netflix uh, 10 10 euro every month we are quite aware right we are it's, it's, it's yeah. kind of it's always in, in our mind but we are paying like uh, 10 times more to the banks without and without uh, even let them us to a bear on what we are paying. So these kind of like um, inequalities, like this kind of like uh, the the behavior uh, that we are trying to change in the in the industry. And I would say the industry is going in a in a good way. The so people are getting more and more aware, uh, which is our one of our goals. And and that is uh, in the consequences of the industry and not only the industry. The people's mind is evolving. The people's are starting to, to uh, their behavior is starting to change and and we the industry is reflecting on it so we are trying to uh, reflect and try to uh, understand the what is changing and what people are demanding and then we to give them what they need as fast as possible do you do you think that the big uh, fish there the big players the big financial institutions are learning something from a product like klarna or is mm -hmm. something uh, still too far from their culture. Or... I hope so. And uh, otherwise, uh, people. I mean, in, in, it will be very logical that people will just not use. And if they mm -hmm. don't change, and they cannot really, uh, they cannot be sustainable in a business environment. I mean, people will not will stop using, and in the end, it will be, it will be end of this uh, this cycle. So <clears throat> I hope they uh, they can check. For example, in Poland, we. Uh, here where I live in Poland, um, the the banks, uh, almost all the banks have uh, quite uh, interesting uh, digital product with uh, services that are really similar to what most fintech uh, unicorns, startups or scale-ups are offering right now. Uh, what would you do you observe in Sweden or more mature market? Uh, Poland is a growing country, emerging, let's say, but what about Germany, Sweden? What have you been observing there? Are those every, digital every, products? Yeah, adopted? every country is every country is very different actually, and because of every um, the culture, people are very different. Like Germany is very tough one, I would say it's uh, yeah. maybe maybe the the toughest in Europe, and Sweden is the is uh, is the like the awareness of the financial um, instruments is is in, is incredible level. So everybody knows, everybody knows the investment, everybody knows how to use money very well, and everything is digital already. And mm -hmm. people don't even use the the cash in in Sweden. They they always pay um, virtually on everything. And of course, it's it's a completely different environment. But in the Germany is also a very different environment where the cash actually is quite used. Even after pandemic, uh, many people are still using the cash. Uh, but it's still uh, the the pandemic changed to certain things, certain behaviors. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, the cash usage is very high, and uh, the trust is on the people is very low. So the people don't trust almost anything, and they don't trust. Um, like we even some of our researchers we seen like uh, if you make things simple. They don't trust anymore so they trust sometimes the complexity and that is like uh, different challenges that we are, we are facing. but they, every market is different every country is different yeah yeah this is why i, I notice big difference i also notice between italy and poland where i live and from where i come that uh, the the market is very very different um let's change topic let's talk more about your experience as a lead designer um some tips and tricks that you can share with other lead designers about uh, how to improve the decision making process when uh, you design uh, 
product that have uh, as we have been talking about so many uh, influence on the life of people and ethical concerns. Yeah, and so it's. I mean, there are many things we can we can talk. I, I don't know which what could be advice for you know what level in you know, what uh, in the context. But as a as a just like a, the natural management, not only the design, I would say just like a delegation is very important and trusting people is very important and just uh, let letting other people to know what is happening and trusting them into drive the certain initiatives by themselves and delegating as much as possible. It's it's quite a healthy way of managing. And uh, about uh, uh, teams, uh, design teams, uh, specifically within uh, tech products and companies, um, what's the best way to uh, keep designers creative and happy, in your opinion? And I think designers, it really depends on person to person. Every person has a di different personalities. But I really um, follow the... Um, uh, the way of understanding the person very well and then uh, letting uh, like creating an environment that person can be very happy in that environment and that is very critical for me and also the from the, the culture where, where I'm, I'm coming from mm -hmm. it's very important uh, to uh, to create an empathy to understanding the other type not only the the working in a structured way but also to like letting the the to other people um, maybe they, they give their opinion and uh, easily they share what they're thinking and also to uh, to empathize empathize in the in a in a safe environment that is very important and and also everybody is quite different so i personally pr prefer to uh, to create an environment where they can be happy and in a different context some people like to be isolated some people like to mm -hmm. be just working not even much talking and some people are the opposite. They really need interaction. They really need uh, other designers' opinion. They really need to collaborate with other things. And it's 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 fine. It's just different personalities and different yeah. uh, the ways of working. There is not a unique recipe, I guess. Um, right. Last question that I see from the audience from uh, Jakub Quick, uh, one at Guru designer and recently team leader. Uh, if the teams uh, are autonomous in Klarna. Um, how do you tackle knowledge sharing between the teams? That is a very good question, and that is very important as well. And because, like, uh, if the teams are very autonomous, and if the domain structure works very well, but in a one problem area, and it means uh, we create the natural silos. Yes. And to able to uh, break these silos, so to not able to create these silos, that we also work very hard to collaborate. Uh, in different uh, different disciplines. So in design disciplines, we call, we try to collaborate and share as much as knowledge as possible with the other uh, designers from other domains. And it's the same thing that we trying to show uh, what we are working on with the other product teams or other other marketing angle or uh, or completely in, in different angle that we are trying to share things as much as possible. That is very important. And also Klan is quite transparent. I think it's, it's something unique is in the Swedish culture. Things are very transparent as well for example in Klarna you can see um, you can see all the information uh, about every team in in our internal uh, websites and you can see mm -hmm. the, even the budget of the every team and and you can see uh, even everybody's calendars are open like you can see everybody's calendar what they are what type of meeting they are attending what are they working on at the moment and these things are very open in Klarna and this information you can reach, like the level of information you can reach in Klan is just crazy. And you just need to uh, to read uh, or you just need to uh, look after the certain things. And and these things allow us to uh, actually be as open as possible. So we are not really like um, the secrecy is very, very, uh, very like unsupported culture in Klan. So everything is more open. And even about the future things that uh, what we're gonna work on the next years is quite shared between not only the domains, also the cross domains. And this allow us to actually the break or to not create the silos as much as possible, of course. Any uh, secret tradition that uh, your design team has uh, in Klarna? some uh, uh, tradition or something that you do together to keep uh, and then spirit and the knowledge sharing also high 
in uh, like a like a ritual only the between yes the give us some trick that we can copy all audience there the same thing something cool that uh, you never told to anyone i mean i i talked everything to everyone so it's uh i'm quite often so it's not well. a secret <laughs> i i don't like secrets and uh, it's more about like um Something new, maybe. okay. Something new, something new that you never. Uh, maybe about. just understanding the people, just like uh, socializing. I think is very important. So I will say, the people. So you are seeing the people you are working with more than your family, and yes, and of course it's very important to become a friend or as close as possible, and because you are spending your life with these people, and you are spending in this time of period, uh, of your life, and it's in this period you are spending actually more time than any any of uh, any of your loved ones any of your family members and that is a quite uh, quite important time that you spend together and and that's why i think it's very important to get socialized get to know each other and of course uh, to trust each other and yes. and socialize in the in oral cool thank you again i think this uh, was all uh, we have three minutes left, but it's good because we are all busy and for sure we need a sip of water for the next meeting. Uh, thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate it. And I invite everybody to the next uh, Disruption Talk Addiction. See you soon. Thank you Thanks so much. Again. Thank you. Thank you for Bye. the inviting. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye.